morning, everybody out there who's ever listening to today's Can of Vibe podcast episode. It is great to be here today with today's special guest. Today's the, the guy you see behind all over in social media with the cannabis infused cooking, the can of BBQ guy. What's up, my guy? How you doing, Marco? What's going? Oh, man, I'm living good today. Just took a few uh, few rips, you know, get the day going pretty good. Uh, yeah. So what you what you smoking today? So I got some uh I got some of this batter from Almora Farms. Um it's very terpene heavy. I can smell that mercy and I think they 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 may add terpenes to it or something, but it's it's really heavy. You get that like stitch and go kind of smell to it. Uh, mm-hmm. really nice, really nice. So my guy, um I kind of just um, just hit you up out of random and again thank you for for sliding to can of vibe i'm pretty excited to have you today so if you want to just tell us you know the audience if they don't know who you are a little bit about yourself yeah so uh, on social media you know for the past four and a half years i've been known as wood fire and whiskey uh i was the guy you know cooking barbecue and at the end of his videos you see me take a drink of whiskey and i slam the glass on my cutting board um you know, I've always had a, you know, a, a special place in me for, for bourbon and cannabis, you know, but I never um, jumped into making cannabis content in, until this year. So at the beginning of this year, my accounts went from wood fire and whiskey to the can of barbecue. Um, doesn't mean I'm not drinking whiskey anymore. It just means, you know, I'm focused on cannabis. So online, I'm known as uh, the can of barbecue. And my focus is trying to the worlds of cannabis and barbecue together obviously they're they're already together for so many people and you know with one of the ventures i have going right now uh, i've had the privilege of being able to meet pit masters all over the country and you know one thing that i've gotten to see is that pit masters love cannabis you know people like to associate barbecue you know alcohol tons of beer and shit but you know a lot of these pit masters they're, they're going behind the smoker and they're you know they're firing up so uh, on social media, the can of barbecue, and I'm trying to bring the worlds of barbecue and cannabis together on social media. Maybe it'll help end the stigma in some way, you know, or at least push it forward to end the stigma, let it be more accessible, you know. Um, but that's why I'm on social media right now. I got a lot of content coming out. YouTube, we got some, you know, a lot of stuff on the infusions and, you know, making different meals, uh, mm-hmm. totally infused. Same thing on Instagram and, and TikTok, but TikTok, you know, they're, they're a little sensitive. Well, we'll actually get into TikTok it later later in, in the show, but you know, so it's from like, what what made you want to focus more on cannabis? Like, why? So you know, I I love cannabis. Um, I've been smoking since I was twelve. You know, cannabis has always been a part of my life. Uh, there was a short period of my life where I didn't smoke, and that was about four and a half years while I was in the military. Uh, from 2005 to late 2009, uh, I didn't smoke it. I didn't smoke at all. I think I smoked once while I was in the military. Uh, I can't remember though, but that was the shortest period. And so when I decided to start making food videos online, you know, this is back, you know, during COVID and people just weren't really able to post about cannabis and go anywhere with it, you know, at least from what I could tell. So I decided to focus my accounts on you know, mostly food. And then my love for bourbon, I have a huge bourbon collection. Um, But, you know, as the years passed, you know, I started to see people, you know, cooking with cannabis and posting cannabis content. And I thought to myself, man, it's, you know, it's time, you know, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love to do. You know, when I'm at home and I'm cooking for myself, I'll infuse my meals for myself because I love edibles. I actually prefer edibles over smoking anything. Um, You know, so it was at 20, 22 i was on a podcast and i remember telling the podcaster yeah january 23 i'm going all barbecue and cannabis and i didn't i just i didn't do it you know i i partnered up with seven of like the biggest barbecue creators on social media and we created a, a streaming network called embers tv i'm one of the founders of tv and i put a lot of focus into that so i didn't i didn't venture off yet into cooking with cannabis but uh something happened last year where I was just, you know, motivated and inspired to finally do it, you know, share my love for cannabis and and barbecue. And so January of this year, I just, you know, made the jump, the transition. I was like, you know what? Um, It's not that I'm tired of promoting alcohol. I love Mm -hmm. bourbon. So I'm not going to be biased and tell people you shouldn't drink it because it's poisonous to you. We all know that already, you Mm -hmm. know, so um, if you like to drink that, 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 that's on you, you do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. 
So uh, I just feel better promoting cannabis than alcohol. You know, um, cannabis is safer. We all know that. And I'm not going to judge anybody for what they do because I drink and I smoke. But, you know, I smoke every day. And so I don't drink every day and I don't yeah. want to drink every but, day. And I make content every day. But imagine <laughs> you know? that, though. Like, like, probably, like, here's the thing, though. Like, if you were to drink every day, like, you knowing you're fucking up, like, your liver and your kidney, you know, like, yeah. but, like, if you're smoking every day, it's like you you don't even what do you know that it's really causing because there hasn't been much of research or or any proven that you know if you consume a lot of cannabis every single day x y and z is going to be the results we don't know that yet so it's like right well you know well <laughs> but you I know feel so, you, yeah so i i just i feel better about promoting cannabis you know it it, it blows my mind to see uh, some of the people that used to follow me upset that, you know, I'm promoting cannabis. And I've even had people tell me, you know, go back to the whiskey content. It's like, damn, that's considered family friendly mm -hmm. to have a drink for dad or mom to have a drink around the kids. And and like, that's, that's totally fine in society because of legalities and, and whatnot, but cannabis safer than all of them doesn't make you violent. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes you happy you hungry makes you sleepy and in a lot of cases it makes you a little horny you know so you know <laughs> weed is um <laughs> cannabis is it, it, it's safer in 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 my opinion would be the more family friendly thing if there was to be something that that could be family friendly because nobody's going to get hurt from it but somebody can't get hurt from alcohol and it, i'm not judging anybody you know on their alcohol use i still drink um but i mind myself you know there's an old saying mind your p's and q's you know, a, a lot of people uh, misinterpret that. And today they'll say, be on your P's and Q's. No, mind your P's and Q's. Mind your pints and quarts. You know, mind your drinking habits a little bit because it's going to change you, right? Yeah, you know, and it, it's more uh, of like... It just feels better to to promote cannabis. Yeah, and then with that, I feel like, again, like I'm, we're, I'm not also as well trying to talk down on the alcohol because as well, like like yourself, I drink too. I have my days where, you know, I give me two cups of, of whiskey and with some coke or you know a corona or a modelo you know but another thing too with that is like how can we still compare cannabis to alcohol you know that's that's one thing yeah. that here in the united states it's doing a lot and it's like it's not the same thing you know it's it's totally two different things and i can only see that why people would kind of not see cannabis friendly is because you know of the of the smell when when we consume you know smoking but then again there's already alternatives to smoking which is the vapes you know yeah. or even uh a electric rig you know or a dab you know or right. food or yeah or, or food. food you know and, and the beauty about like cooking with cannabis is you know, and I, before I go into this, I you know, I just want to say for, for those of you listening to the podcast, if you watch my content and you see me being very heavy handed with my infusions, I have an incredibly high tolerance. Uh, edibles are my, um, that's my method of consumption. That's what I prefer to do. So my tolerance, you know, 100, 200 milligrams, if I send you to the hospital, well, not to the hospital, to the bedroom, <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's just going to make me a little comfortable. You know what I mean? Not you personally. I'm just like, mm. for those listening, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know what anybody's tolerance is. I just know mine is high. So when you see me heavy handed with my infusions, um, mm. I can handle that. That's fine. You know, however, uh, when cooking with cannabis, the of it is that you can be super precise with the dose. Like when you know how to cook with concentrates, a little bit of math goes a long way and you can get down to within a few milligrams of the correct dosage. Right. And again, you know, a few milligrams does make the difference yeah. in sending someone to space and someone being comfortable. Some, But it gives you a more accurate way of predicting the outcome and what the dose is going to be. Right. So let's say you have a party with uh, adult friends and it, let's say it's Super Bowl party. Right. You make yeah. a bunch of chicken wings and you dose it properly. Each chicken wing could be like one or two milligrams, you know, and and can eat two of them and go you know be comfortable get to low earth orbit someone can eat 10 of them and like go woo yeah. go all the way and then you can have like like there's something that i make i call it my finishing oil which i i, I kind of took the idea from someone else i i, I saw someone else online they created what they call the finishing oil so i created my version where um if anybody that's with me wants to get fucking lit uh you know one dropper of my finishing oil in a taco mm -hmm. a burrito your salsa, whatever, it's going to send you the fucking moon. It's going to be like, you know, 50 to 100 milligrams. Oh, um, wow. You know, so it, it, 
with, so with Pookie could... gets super specific with the dose. Is my that's my point. So then, for you, since you know you you have a high tolerance, of course, because you eat infused food every every time you, you with these videos of course you built up the tolerance so like what is the max that you you put in for your your personal use like what 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 is like the max milligrams you, you've done i haven't found that yet oh. <laughs> i haven't found that yet so uh uh december 31st new year's eve my mm -hmm. wife and i were in vegas and we go to uh planet 13 and i get these uh i think they're pro tabs but they're like 100 milligram tabs because i was like damn you know, a hundred milligram bag of gummies really going to do anything for me. The hundred milligram drinks, they're not really going to do anything for me. Mm -hmm. um, the little ripper vape pens, you know, they did a little something, but I wanted, uh, I wanted for New Year's Eve to like really be out there. I took three of these things. It was 300 milligrams total. I was comfortable. That's, that's about it. Damn. You know, I was still hitting the vape pen. So um, I think I need a tea break on, mm -hmm. on edibles, but it's just, it's, it's my preferred method of consumption. So, you know, I'm one of those people that uh, just kind of, and, and, damn, this sounds so like addicty of me, but um, addicty, and that's not even a fucking word, but uh, I'm one of those guys be high all day, like in, in some way, shape or form, like I'm smoking weed all day. And I, and I've been like that for so long, you know, when it comes to edibles, you know, I naturally, you know, I'll make myself some eggs and bacon in the morning and then couple drops of my finishing oil you know mm -hmm. um you know so i haven't found the top of like what handle but i imagine uh it's somewhere in the realm of like five maybe 600 milligrams might be the top because i haven't gone that far yet um i plan to do a collab this year with uh, a guy named stoner gump uh mm -hmm. he's one of my favorite uh cannabis creators on social media right now dude is fucking hilarious i know he's he's got a high tolerance so maybe We'll, we'll play we'll play a little game <laughs> and, <laughs> and see how uh, see how many milligrams we could do <laughs> yeah no i mean with my case i mean again like i right now currently i'm on the tea break but like if it wasn't for right now i can be smoking with you right now and just me in general i'm like yourself like I, i'm the type of consumer that likes to be high all day from like the way time i wake up to the time i go to sleep um, yeah. I guess for some people that sounds like, oh my God, like what's wrong with you or, you know, stuff like that. But then again, I, I kind of take it, uh, from like the, the inspiration from Seth Rogen when I heard a pod clip of his, where he kind of says like how cannabis is like, uh, it helps him on this journey of life of his. So that's kind of how yeah. I kind of see it as well. Like, it just helps me go through life, you know, like it's not a dependency. It's more like, it's just the way I choose to to be, you know? I put it like this. I'm human, right? Mm -hmm. we're, all, we're, we're all human, I, I suppose, in some way. Uh, we come from this planet, uh, apparently, supposedly. And if we come from this planet, that shit came from this planet. That's for me. Mm -hmm. That's for me. That plant is for me. If you're going to if you're gonna sit here and tell me cauliflower's for me, broccoli's for me, spinach is for me, cannabis is for me too, you know? Um, so a lot of people might judge on the fact that somebody might use cannabis every day, but let me tell you something. For those of you listening in here, those of you that that work in a corporate ar corporate office, Barbara in HR, she's high all fucking day. So is Deborah. So, so is Deborah. Deborah. So Holly. <laughs> so so is Jerome. So is Polly. So is yeah. Marcos. All of them. They're all fucking lit all day, and you just don't know. They're out there with the Benjamin right now. You know. Uh, uh, on their lunch break. Of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, there was a, I used to work at the Olive Garden when I was uh, like 18 years old. And there was, that I worked with. When he got hired, I was like, man, this guy is always fucking high. I just know it. I just know it. And so one day, you know, after work, we're hanging out, we smoke and shit. And I asked him, how do you get away with coming into work, high as shit, working your whole shift, stepping outside to go smoke or something, and then coming back in? He said, oh, I did the interview high. <laughs> so the boss thinks this is how I look That's and, I, and I was like this guy is brilliant he was on a he was on a whole other level and that you know I remember thinking fuck I already work here she knows what I look like I can't pull that off you know That's the fun. next job I get I'm gonna try that shit <laughs> That's funny and I'm not gonna lie to you I actually came I've done some couple of interviews high too but this is like where <laughs> I'm already know how to be around public because when I started I couldn't right. I would laugh my ass off anywhere so I'm like at a point where I know how to act, but then it's like, like shit, like as well for my, my eyes are kind of like low all the time, whether I'm high or not. So 
my everybody's like, dude, you're lucky. So it's like you can't even tell if you are or not because your eyes are are so low. And I'm like, it'd be like that, bro. I don't care. <laughs> it's a it's a superpower, you know. Right. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's you know, people people thinking that you know, you know, the, for the for the new user, right? For for the beginner, you know, trying to be high all day, it's 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 not gonna work, right? You're 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 gonna be um, confused and just anxiety filled, you know, um, not saying for anybody to just keep using until you get to that point. But uh, there's a lot of us out there that just kind of grew up around this and, and using cannabis from a very young age into adulthood. And we're successful. We, we have things we, we contribute to society and we still, you know, play a role. You know, um, people will still look at this like like we're something that we're not, you know, and, and, and for lack of better words, a lot of people like to look at that like that's, you know, you're a loser. Smoke all day. Okay, well, consider the source of, you know, the person calling you a loser, right? I've been called a loser by people that don't have shit yet. Mm -hmm. I own a house and cars and my business and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty successful in life. And not to say that that's the way you measure success. I'm, I'm very happy as well. You know, it's just, um, you know, don't look at something you don't understand is I, I guess what I'm saying, because a lot of people, you know, we use cannabis for different reasons. You know, I'm, I'm a veteran. Um, it does help with, with, with some of the, the things that I deal with. Um, and you know, yeah, just don't judge things you don't understand, right? You know, you don't understand what, what, what people use in cannabis for. Not, not everybody is just trying to get like blazed out of their mind, right? Mm -hmm. You know, five milligrams might take someone into the next dimension and cross the spider verse. <laughs> five milligrams just might make my mind a little at ease. 10 milligrams might just make my mind a little at ease and I can function completely. I can do that off a hundred milligram, but <laughs> who's counting? You know, yeah. um, my point is, is that, you know, people look at this with, with such a negative, um, it's just a negative mindset and, and you don't have to. Now, if I was drunk all day, you would tell, you would be able to tell, you know, you'd smell it, you would see it, you'd experience it. Right. Yeah. You know? I think that's with everybody though. And yeah. I, and I feel like with alcohol is like, Although you can be responsible on your usage and, and I guess one could actually handle the alcohol. But then again, I feel like there's a certain point where that shit just kind of switches on you and then you're just not under controlled at that point. And it's, it's, sometimes it just looks bad on, on one. Like, because then again, you know yourself, it's not you in reality, you know, like it's only when you're at a certain point of how many, how much of alcohol is in your body. Yeah. And, and, you know, for, for most people too, the, the, the best way to consume cannabis is don't do it until after three o'clock. If you got to use it every day, but you feel like it's impacting your life in any mm -hmm. kind of way, don't do it until after three when all the response, well, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Don't use cannabis until the responsibilities for the day have been done, then use, and, 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 and you'll, you'll develop a more health relationship with cannabis um, I'm just somebody who, this is my day. This, this is what I do and I'm fine with it. So I'm, I'm good. But, you know, for anybody out there that, that feels that it may be affecting, you know, their day-to-day -day responsibilities, do the responsibilities first and then enjoy your cannabis. So like, I guess for like, I guess in users like, um, like us, like, cause I dab a lot. I, I, I prefer to dab over smoking some flour. Although I love flour too, but just because I feel like I can smoke inside my house with dabs, no problem at all. Yeah. So like it, my mindset with edibles is like I love edibles. I always tell myself this ain't gonna make me feel shit because at the end I know it's gonna hit me right in the face. But I feel like sometimes yeah. with edibles is like you don't. I don't. For me and personally, I feel like I don't get too high as I want to with edibles now, and it's like that's why I kind of I'm taking a tea break too because I feel like I need to you know take a lot of dabs. I could take like up to five dabs, be okay. You know, the sixth one is, yeah, you know, outer space, high as fuck. But, like, I, I'm guessing w with one who consumes a lot, I'm guessing they would have to consume more edibles with more milligrams or. Yeah, the, the tolerance just, it, it, it builds and it builds, you know. Um, you know, somebody had explained the science of the cannabinoid receptors in the brain and how they, you know, they can get overloaded and just kind of not work. You know, in a sense, again, I have limited knowledge on that, so uh, don't quote me on that. But, um, uh, you know, with more usage with anything, you'll develop a tolerance. And that goes with that. I mean, that goes.
everything. If you're taking Vicodin, you know, every day, you're going to develop a, a tolerance to Vicodin and Tylenol, you know, so it's the same, same with edibles. You know, uh, I think like for me, a month long tolerance break would, uh, would probably reset. Um, however, because I make these videos and I'm constantly cooking with cannabis, it's kind of not possible. I'm just always eating it. And I'm fine with that because, uh, I know how to like really dial in my dose to get me to where I'm at. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I cook, I cook a lot with cold water hash. It's just, for me, it's, it's like my favorite method. You decarb it and you just mix it into some fat and you can mix that into anything. You don't have to drain anything. It just kind of dissolves right in. Uh, same thing with cooking with um, any kind of concentrates, you know, you, you get a gram of some good cold water hash and it's like six, 700 milligrams. You know, you probably lose about 20% of it when you decarb it. Um, but you don't strain anything. So anything, you know, in that material there, you just mi mix it all in as opposed to like, you know, uh, cooking with flour at the end, you have to, you have to strain all that flour. And there's some THC that, that stays back in that flour. So you lose 20, 30% when you decarb flour and cook with it, you know, but when you're cooking with concentrates, you get a really um, potent outcome. And, you know, that helps me for somebody with a high tolerance, because then I can just make something for myself. Like I said, I have this little vial, this finisher, and um, it doesn't taste like anything. It's just MCT oil and cold water hash, and it's a few thousand milligrams. So when I, I do a few drops. That's nice, though, yeah, to have that. It's just extra extra layer on top, you know, a little <laughs> icing on the cake. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's it's super simple to, to make, too. You get your, you get your hash, right? Uh -huh. You take some parchment, squish it between some parchment, fold it up in, in the corners, Put in the oven at 240. At least this is what I do. There may be a better method, but this is what I do. Put in the oven at 240 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Once it's done, I scrape it into a few tablespoons of fat, about a quarter cup of fat, really. And I whisk that all in. And there you go. I mean, that, it's, it's that simple. You just got to make sure that it's all whisked in. You don't want any chunks. You want it all divided throughout that oil. Uh, whatever jar you put it in, just shake it up from time to time. A little bit will set at the bottom, but not, not all of it. A lot of it is just dissolved in the oil. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's that's pretty much it. That's a basic finishing oil. You just mix that with some MCT and whisk it together. Hey, put the drops on whatever you, you need. Mm -hmm. Good to go. So so um it was a good segue to, to the next thing, but it's like how how is like other than than the way you do with your hash water, like what other methods do you use to to make your like your infused oils or or like the seasonings or like what uh, how, how what's your methods so th there there's really only two ways to to infuse anything uh -huh. it's it's fat and or alcohol and with alcohol you have to find like i recently made a video on how to in, how to infuse how to extract the, the cannabinoids with alcohol using everclear i didn't show the bottle because california has specific laws on on the proof so i didn't want to show the bottle i'm in california i had a high proof mm -hmm. alcohol you want something 190 proof and higher 151 works if you can get it um culinary solvent is probably the best if you can get your hands on it which is a 200 uh 200 proof ethanol um but you know butter and alcohol are going to be the best methods to use alcohol is going to extract the cannabinoids right and it's going to stay with the alcohol whereas butter it's actually going to use um thc is is uh, fat soluble so uh it's going to suspend in the fat and you know it's going to be ready to absorb into the body. I'm not, you know, super educated on the science behind it, but that's how I understand it right now with fats and, and alcohols. And with the alcohol tincture that you make and the alcohol, you can, uh, you can infuse salt and you can infuse sugar. And it's, it's super simple because once you have your, your alcohol tincture made, uh, it's a two to one ratio. Uh, you know, let's say a cup of, um, cup of salt or a cup of sugar to a half cup of, uh, of the tincture. And you just let it kind of dry out over, over a few days and the alcohol will evaporate leaving the cannabinoids behind with the salt or, or the sugar not the best method for infusion because you're still going to lose some thc in that um, evaporation from the way i understand it mm -hmm. um but it's still a way to infuse and with that sugar you can create a simple syrup from it you can any any dish that requires sugar and it's going to take a ton of heat because uh anything above i believe 300 degrees starts to degrade the cannabinoids so when you're cooking with this stuff, you got to mind those temperatures and the length, right? You know, um, salt, the same thing. You know, if you're cooking and you're going to put salt into a really hot sauce, you might lose a lot of that THC and you likely will. Now, if it's just warm, you're going to keep those cannabinoids. You just don't want to um, get it, but, you know, above 
I'd say to stay around low and slow is the way to go. Don't go above 275. I think that's, you know, the safe zone. And then you still got to mind the time, you know, at which it's, it's at that temperature because that could still degrade the teas. Again, from the way that I understand it, I still have a lot of uh, learning to do on, on this subject matter, but as mm -hmm. far as, you know, what I've done and, and the results that I've gotten, everything that, that I'm teaching in my videos, it's, it's worked, you know, it's gotten me to that point, but you know, education, it just always continues. Fats and alcohol, that's the way to go when, when you're infusing, always with the fat. So like, you know, I got called out on a video, uh, my hot honey video, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a very, a, a person I respect completely, especially in, in the cannabis cooking world, you know, pointed out that uh, I didn't put a fat in me. And I realized, holy shit, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm teaching people the wrong thing. I took that video down. I respect this fucking person. I, you know, I even sent her a message thanking her for calling me out. I'm like, you know, I don't want to be putting out bullshit, you know. Um, but I did forget to put the fat in it. And I, that's how I always made it. So um, anyhow, fats and alcohol is going to be the way to go with uh, with infusing things. And between those two, which one is like your favorite to, to infuse? Fat. Okay. Fat. Okay. Definitely fat. Uh, because with the alcohol tincture... Um, I guess I haven't found it's it, it's complete use yet, mm -hmm. uh, other than you know, infusing salt and sugar for what I wanted. You know, I could pour the tincture into certain sauces and everything, but I could also do that with butter, and I think that'll be a better medium. Um, so, you know, with alcohol, I like it because I can infuse little things like salt and sugar, and then I could take the the salt and sugar. I can create a finishing seasoning with it. Um, I could just use the salt at the at the end of a recipe when things aren't too hot to kill off the cannabinoids and sprinkle it. But fat, fats are the way to go because I could, you know, with my finishing oil, I take that MCT oil, infuse the hell out of it. And, you know, just a few drops go, go a long way. And it's a better delivery system for our bodies. You know, the fat is, is going to process and the THC is going to go with it and boom, you're there in, in, in space, you know, so fats are, fats are by far, not just my favorite, but they're just the way to go. Okay, because like I feel like with like butter, it, it'll be nothing but like pastry stuff, or, or like you know, like pancakes, all from what I can think of. Then you then you infuse avocado oil or olive oil or MCT oil. You know, any any kind of any kind of fat can mm -hmm. be infused. Just mind the fat that you're using and what you're using it for, right? You know, uh, you can infuse lard. You know, I can infuse lard, right? Bring it to you know, bring it back to its solid form, make some tortillas. You know, I can infuse olive oil and at the end of a, you know, a pasta dish, a pizza, just a salad, just uh -huh. drizzle it on. You know, MCT oils is great for, you know, a finishing oil because um, I can make that really potent and only use a few drops. MCT, uh, it's known to give people the runs. So a ton of MCT oil, I would never just just give someone. But if mm -hmm. I can infuse the shit out of MCT oil and just give a few drops that kind of give you get you to a better place, uh, that that's a good way to do it. Uh, butter. I mean, butter could be used in so many, so many different ways, right? It's just, you know, minding the temperature at which you're cooking, mm -hmm. you know, to, to keep those cannabinoids, you know, cookies are still cooked at, you know, 350 degrees uh, with can of butter in it. But that's not to say that the butter mixed in actually reaches that degree. And I, I may have that wrong. So if there's any fucking chefs or sign people listening and I got that wrong, just fucking call me out. It's fine. I have no ego. You know, I'm not mm. trying to spread misinformation here. I'm just giving you the, what, what I under, what I know, and what I understand. Yeah. By, um, based on your experience and all. So, yeah, then... so, but yeah, but butter can be used, you know, more than just pastries, you know, uh, Buffalo wings, right. You take the Frank's red hot and then you mix it with some butter. Boom. Oh, yeah. and now you got some Buffalo wing sauce infused. That sounds smacking. I ain't gonna lie right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it's close to lunchtime too over here. So <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh so then what what has been like your favorite dish so far that you, you that you've made and like what is like one of your I guess all like goal to dish to make infuse? You know, um my favorite one recently, so I, I did a collab uh, for my YouTube channel. It's gonna go up on Sunday with uh Beard Bros Farms. Mm -hmm. and beard bro uh, jeff he brought over his uh his tinctures he brought over his cbd tinctures and uh we made uh tri-tip sandwiches with a chimichurri aioli that we infused with jack hair terpenes um the cbd and some canna oil and it was just 
it was so good. It was so good. So that's probably one of my favorite things that we've made recently, aside from like the pizzas that I make. I love pizza. So I always have pizza dough in my fridge. I always have par bakes ready to go, you know? So um, those are my favorite. But what I'm, what I'm really excited to infuse uh, soon are some pupusas. I grew up on pupusas. You know, you, have you ever had pupusas? Nah. Well, what is that? Is it? I feel like I heard so, of it. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but so it, it's a it's a Salvadorian dish. Uh-huh. Uh, it's cor- it's corn masa, and it's filled with like cheese and pork, kind of like a like a gordita, right? Okay. Um, you know, like that that thick corn tortilla. It, you know, the the quesadilla, open it up, start stuffing it and shit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that, but we don't open it. We we stuff everything in it, and then we you know put it on the hot plate and get get both sides nice and crispy okay it's so good good. yeah bro the cheese starts oozing out look look it up pupusas but that's uh that's gonna be my my uh that's gonna be something i can't wait to infuse and ramen at some point i want to do like a whole like fucking ramen i made ramen last year i had some ramen chefs walk me through uh how to make the broth and everything and it came out incredible but i fucked up when i was filming it so I never edited it, but I'm gonna do it again. And this time, I'm gonna I'm gonna infuse it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just show you real quick. You talking about uh this right right here? Like yes. That? Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, in mm-hmm. Mexico, yeah, you can say like us in Mexico, we call these gorditas. Yeah, yeah. This is this does look smacking. <laughs> so then, bro, guess- it's gonna be so good. I mean. And so I guess I have I have a I don't know if you call it a stupid question, but it's like, can you infuse like meats like chicken, like red meat, like steak and stuff, or, or is that like, like is is that possible? Or I don't think so. Okay. I think that like let's say you had pork shoulder, right? Um, you're gonna cook it. Yeah, you know, the the way to do it is just gonna be through something at the end, right? You know, cannabis doesn't really like heat in it you know high heat i should yeah. say the cannabinoids don't like high heat you know and they don't like being under heat for a very long period of time <laughs> the way i understand it like, i'm always going to preface it with that because i don't i know i know there's going to be some people listening that are like you're fucking wrong but there's a better way <laughs> anyhow well, um, well, fucking tell you know, us now <laughs> yeah then let me know All right <laughs> uh, i ordered a few books oh uh, but like with, with steak, right? So mm-hmm. I think the best way to do it is a compound butter, infused butter at the end. You know, the steak is resting. Put that butter on top, cover it, let the steak rest. The butter is going to melt all over it. Eat the steak, but then have like a Hawaiian roll or something on the side. So you pop up all of those juices and that butter. That's the only way you're really going to get it. I could put some infused salt over the top, but I can only put so much because, you know, salt, right? Don't yeah. over salt it. You know, um, so infusing meats... I think it's going to be pretty difficult. Um, I'd have to experiment with like making, you know, an infused seasoning and then smoking something for a long period of time and, you know, seeing what happens. But I think I kind of already know the results. I think I'm, A, I'm going to damage the terpenes, Mm -hmm. you know, anything that's left behind or that, that I was going to try to preserve in any, in any shape, the terpenes are gone. Um, Yeah, I I think, I, I don't, I don't think it'll work. I don't, I don't think, but it's an experiment that I, that I would love to try. And, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with uh, Jeremy Yoder, the mad scientist of barbecue. And he's like a barbecue science guy. Maybe I can convince him to do, help me do this experiment someday. Um, maybe cook a whole brisket with an infused seasoning and inject it with cannabis and see what happens. Yeah. You know, it'd be a fun experiment, but I think I know the results already. See, see, so do, well, I have two questions. Uh, well, one is, do you, what, do you use like a certain machine? Because I personally bought a machine I could like literally during COVID, uh, it was a what's it called a Levo machine. Yeah, I, I have the Levo and I have the Magic Butter. Okay, okay. So you use both to infuse? Um, more recently, I, I stopped using them. the The only thing I use my Magical Butter for is to make alcohol tinctures. That's, um, you know, alcohol is very flammable. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's just a, a safety thing. We have kids in the house, so, um. You know, uh, the alcohol tinctures I make, that's the only thing I use the, ma- the magical butter for. Okay. Um, as far as the Levo, if I'm, it, it's kind of like a, kind of like a pellet smoker, right? Uh, when, when you don't feel like doing the work and standing there, you know, at the stove with the double boiler, um, mixing every, every, you know, few minutes or so, uh, 
you use uh, the Levo, okay. you know, you don't want to do all, all the work. I love my Levo. I think it's fantastic. It's a, a set it and forget it. Um, but a lot of times, especially now I'm, I'm cooking with traits. So it's like, I just decarb and then I, I mix it into whatever fat that I'm cooking with. And you could do it like right there on the spot. So like, I don't have to make uh, butter today to cook with it in a few days. You know, um, I can, you know, have butter ready to go with cold water hash in about 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. So it's like a faster the decarb process. time and then mixing it in. Yeah. It, it's a faster process and it just goes into the recipe because you don't have to like, um, you don't have to uh, strain anything out of it. It just goes right into the recipe, whatever you're cooking. Um, yeah. I, I recently read an article and I think it was food 52 by Vanessa Marigold. Uh, he kind of talks about this stuff mm -hmm. um, about how, you know, cooking with, with hash, you, can, you just mix this right in. Fantastic article. Loved it. It gave me a lot of insight into uh, cooking with, uh, with hash, but, but yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I've only used it twice. Uh, because i just wanted to try it out see how it, how, how how it would work and all um so i i've done butter and oil um and i've done brownies uh for my first time when my first batch of oil i did uh brownies and then my second dish i did was a chorizo con huevo <laughs> so nice. i kind of so here's the thing, if based on like what you just said and all, I feel like that's why I kind of didn't, I feel like I didn't really feel high with when I made chorizo with huevo because again, with the meat and how much of time, you know, I was cooking and now, now I know it's like you should, you know, cook with lower temp and for a longer time than with, I think how you would normally cook with just normal ingredients. Yeah. I, you know, the, the best, the best method, you know, that I, that I like to tell people is infuse on the finish you can infuse during the cook but you got to really pay attention to those temperatures and the time but if you infuse on the finish you have a better chance of like really feeling the effects you know so thing that doesn't have to be cooked so let's say you make uh you make guacamole you mm -hmm. make a, a salsa right you make pico de gallo you make um uh, uh an, an aioli any kind of sauce that doesn't need to be cooked that you can infuse and you can use on a finish that that's going to be the way to go okay nice we all know that now. you know look, you know let's say like you know let's say you know you make um an infused olive oil right mm -hmm. or an infused avocado oil that infused avocado oil is something i have on my shelf all the time because you know let's say i make a i want to make a little sandwich right i'm subway today and i want to make me a subway sandwich i'll take the bread after i toast it and then just a little oil over it and then start building it boom infusion is in there you know soaks into the bread um and it takes you there you know so anything that you can in, that you could do on the finish and without cooking i think is going to be the best method if you're using a fat which you should be um you're going to get to that place that you want to go your infusions i think will be better and more potent well depending on how you make the infusions that's what makes it potent but you'll feel it if you don't if you just use it on the finish that's just <laughs> that's the best advice anybody can give you all right for sure my guy so then I know that you, you, you've been uh, also having this uh, food network that uh, you are a co-owner co too. So like, do you ever plan on, on bringing cannabis chefs to, to your network, you know, for them to have like a show or something like that? Yeah. So uh, last year, you know, a, a bunch of barbecue creators and I, we, we all came and we created Embers TV. Embers TV is a streaming platform dedicated to the world of open fire cooking, barbecue, outdoor cooking, et cetera. Um, we have a ton of shows uh, planned for the network. And at some point there will be, you know, a can of barbecue series. And hopefully, you know, that'll lead to us bringing some cannabis chefs to the network. You know, it is a barbecue focused platform. So everything that we do is going to be barbecue in some way, outdoor mm -hmm. cooking in some way. But um, I would love to have, you know, some huge pit master on the show someday, uh, you know, cooking with cannabis with me or, or just, you know, having their own cooking with, you know, cannabis and barbecue. Uh, I think it would be great. I think, I think it's time. I think the world is ready for, you know, more um, cooking with cannabis shows that are just open to everybody. Yeah. It, it, I feel like it, it's a new way of like, you know, making it as a cultural thing and as more as a, a more acceptance and open minded, you know? 
because again you're bringing, you're bringing food and cannabis you know what that those two things do go along very well like it or yeah. not <laughs> Yeah, it just makes everything feel and taste better. So, hell yeah! So you know, how, so uh, at some point it'll it'll come to work. So how how is it running running a, a food network? Like, as so I, I'm one of the founders. Uh -huh. uh, we started off when we started off. I was the creative director of the company, uh, but balancing you know social media and trying to run that it it, it was challenging for me. So. Uh, for betterment of the company, I just kind of, you know, took a step back from that. Uh, but being one of the founders, um, you know, it, it's exciting. It's exciting because I'm seeing my friends, uh, like, you know, a few of my friends already have shows on on the network and they're doing great. Like TFTI.barbecue show is fantastic. Fucking love that. You know, uh, Alpony, he's the open fire king. You know, um, he's got his his master class, Rourke Boys Barbecue. You know, these guys, they they have their their own uh, shows already up and running. I don't have a show yet because in the beginning I had helped, you know, you know, build the platform. I went to all the shoots and was helping a lot with the editing process. So we didn't really get to my shows yet. And I wasn't ready to transition cannabis. So, um, you know, it, it's exciting because I know um, all of my friends that I went into this with are going to have something incredible on the platform. I'm going to have something incredible on the platform. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, shows that are being licensed for the platform right now that I can't really say anything about, but it, it, it's, it's exciting, you know, and if, you know, when this thing really takes off, you know, we're still small. We just started less than a year ago. Um, but when this thing takes off, you know, it's, uh, I can see it uh, being a part of like maybe cable television at some point, because the content is, it's, it's really, it's something special. Something special. We went to Argentina last year. We spent two weeks in Argentina traveling the country and documenting uh, the asado culture uh, with Al Fergoni. And, oh, man, that series is almost ready to come out and release to the platform. And I think people are going to absolutely fall in love with it. And what was cool in Argentina, I was hanging with the pitmasters and uh -huh. I was like, man, I wish I had some weed. I wish I had some weed. Motherfucker came out with some weed. I got some Argentina weed. And it was, it was, a, it was a good time. It was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I was Argentina weed. Not bad, man. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, in the Bay, in the Bay Area, we have a term from my generation. We used to call the the shit weed bammer. Uh -huh. Definitely wasn't bammer. It was it was some uh, it was some really good weed. So, the Argentines, they got some good weed. Shout out to Argentina. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of good shit out there. You know, you got Messi out there. I just won them the World yeah. Cup and all. <laughs> But like overall, I feel like I think you know some parts of you know South America cannabis is starting to become you know legal. So I'm not too sure if Argentina is like is it a legal uh, country for cannabis? Um, I I don't think it's legal. You know, there was the first person that hooked me up with some cannabis when I was out there. Um, I rolled up a joint and we went outside his business and. He was like looking out for me while I was smoking, so I don't, I don't think it was, uh, oh, okay. it was completely legal. Uh -huh. You know, uh, there was a, you know, one of the, one of the cops were walking down the road, and he was like, oh, hold on, hold on, and I, I put it down for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, I, I'm pretty sure it's still illegal, but you know, maybe at yeah. some point these laws are going to catch up with reality. Yeah, because yeah, I seen on, on your page that you put like uh, clips of, of like you being in Argentina and all, but like I guess going from different parts of the world do you try to do you to try to see you know if the cannabis is allowed there or like like how you just mentioned like you you were asking for a smoke you know for, for a little weed smoke so like is that kind of what you see or do as you travel well you know before i go anywhere you know mm -hmm. I, I just kind of like you know google's my friend so i just look it up and see what the laws are but then when you get there and you and you you know you get to talk to certain people people you up right you mm -hmm. know you just got to be mindful of where you're doing it at because the last thing any of us want to do is get in trouble in another country and then be on an episode of locked up abroad or some shit you know <laughs> um <laughs> yeah you know, right so before we went to argentina i looked it up and mm -hmm. i thought i had read that it was medicinally there uh, mm -hmm. i could be completely i could i think i was wrong you know but um yeah you know it just depends you know where you go if it's just super illegal and I'm not sure I could trust people, you know, I don't need it. It's fine. It's fine. Where's the bourbon? You know, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for sure. And then I guess uh, what what's places ha have you gone outside the, the states that that weed is legal? So uh, so while I was in Iraq, 
2000, I think it was 2007. Um, one of the, one of the guys, uh, he was just, he was fucking stoner through and through. Uh, he, he couldn't pass a drug test to save his life. So while we were out there, out there, uh -huh. um, of course it had to be him that, that found an Iraqi with some, uh, with some weed. And so I, you know, I smoked some weed while I was in Iraq, took a few puffs and I was, it was some shit, but I, uh, yeah, it got me high. It got me high. Um, there, Argentina, Mexico, uh, that's pretty much it. Those are the only countries, I, other countries I've smoked in. Okay. And uh, what, I want to go you, everywhere else. What you think on, on the Mexico uh, weed <laughs> when you went oh, there? Dude, or... They had some good shit. They, they, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Well, the guy that hooked me up, it wasn't bad. I, I, I mean, it was probably some like upper California mid, like upper mid, like almost not even mid. It was just, it was, it was cool. It was good, you know. Um, it was, uh, it was, it was sticky and juicy. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Dried out, per dried out, but still with the sticky and juiciness, the little fluffy pillows. Um. I love when they have fluffy, when it's fluffy, like the little nugs, bro. Like you can squish on them. Nice. Yeah. Just now like he that. charged me for it. He <laughs> charged me way too much for it, but you know, I, I had gotten some weed and it was good. Yeah, but I could, I could imagine like how, how it is to grow cannabis in other places, you know, compared to like how we think of when you come, when people grow here, you know, like. For example, like over how you just mentioned in those three other countries, like for example, like Mexico, like I'm sure majority of these crops would be grown outside, you know, and and yeah. based on on just how you know Mexican soil is and all that, and how the temperature is out there, like I'm sure it it could it benefits the plant, you know, or and I'm I'm guessing for everywhere else. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not too sure. Uh, very uh, well versed on, on growing. Um, but uh, it it did, uh, you know. Thinking back, this is this is a, a while ago, so it did kind of feel like some outdoor, like some really good outdoor. This is a long time ago. We're talking over ten years ago, um, you know. Uh, the weed in Iraq that that was funny. That was funny. It was like it was really dry. It just kind of crumbled, you know. Um, <laughs> it could have just been the person who who had it. Uh -huh. You know, uh, he kept telling us that he can get us hashisha, hashisha, hashisha. And I remember telling my boy, this is, you know, 2007. I was like, is he talking about hash? He's like, I think so. And I was like, yeah, hashisha, hashish, hash, hash. Right. And he was uh -huh. like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't want to trust. And I was like, bro, he's going to get us some hash. It's way better. You know, just give me some foil and I, you know, we'll smoke some fucking hash, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll put in a cigarette for you, whatever you need, yeah. you know, uh, and, and he was like, nah, nah, we'll get the buds from him. And he, they were buds, but like, they were just like crumbling. You could hear it, you know, it was like ripping paper. Um, but it did something. There, there was definitely some THCA conversion happening when we smoked it. <laughs> yeah. As long as it gets the job done, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and tough times needed, man. <laughs> yeah. So then. How how is actually the California industry over there with with cannabis? You know, uh, it seems like it's it, it's cool. It's it's available pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think I have three dispensaries within a mile of me where I live. You oh. know, and they're all really cool, great places, very friendly. They have tons of products, lots of deals all the time. Um, the the market in terms of like being able to acquire a variety of things, California is fantastic. So there's places where you can go and you can actually buy the butter, avocado oil, MCT oil, things to cook with. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also, you know, the things to smoke and, you know, the fun edibles like the gummies and shit. Uh, but, it, but the market seems to be cool. Now, as far as like the can of business in California, I, I, I just, I'm not well versed on that not too sure. Um, if it seems like the business is going good for some people, uh, I recently had the privilege of meeting um, the owner through a video chat of a Cali kosher dispensaries here in the Central Valley, and he's opening a new one here in town. So I imagine that the the can of business in California is is going well for someone from multiple dispensaries, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but but as in, in terms of like like what you can get your hands on, California is great. You know, there there's 
you know, for someone like me that likes to make his own edibles and oils and shit, um, there's just a variety of extracts to kind of play with. And, you know, uh, some, some dispensaries even have isolates and distillates, and you can incorporate those into your oils and foods and really dial in dosage, you know. Um, yeah, the California market with cannabis, uh, I like it. I like it. I don't, I wouldn't want to leave California because of that. Mm-hmm. But I want to leave California taxes. It's fucking sucks. But my access to cannabis is just, um, it's it's great. You know, uh, you know, if I learned if if I really took the time and taught myself how to grow and maintain plants and stuff, I wouldn't need California at all. You know, but um, it, it's 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 great. You know, being able to just go and you know get some you know good concentrate and shit. Um, yeah. So the community vibes is just it's just like kind of like a big ass vibe then. I think so. You know, on uh, on 420, mm-hmm. there's an event here in California uh, called Burning Flowers. It's in Stockton, California. And the owner, uh, well, not the owner, well, the owners, the people putting on the event, they seem really fucking cool. And everybody involved seems just super chill. And everybody that I've met so far in the cannabis industry here in California have just been super chill. You know, I've met a couple brands, heavy hitters, fantastic people, their marketing team fucking love those people they're they're just you know, really cool uh a few different brands have reached out to me the happiest hour this is probably you know one of my favorite brands there's no cannabis in this drink but it's a it's a terpene drink it's a uh, mercine infused like a mango drink it's a wellness shot and you know you take you you drink it before you partake and you know uh, it, it kind of like gives you like a boost Dia is like supposedly you know with, with terpenes i don't know that enough gets into our bodies that, you know, makes a difference. Uh-huh. You know, um, I like to think that, that that's how it works, but I'm not too sure. You know, I think uh, more testing is needed on terpenes and biology before, you know, we can truly claim that there's an effect. Um, I think there is, but, you know, it, it could be a placebo effect. You know, I could just be expecting something to happen and it does. Um, I need to research more of the science on that before I can, you know, confidently say what terpenes do or they don't do. But my guess is that it's mostly just adding flavor, you know, to things. Uh Um, Now, if it does enhance mood in any way, um, yeah, I'd like to see some science on that, you know, but, you know, so I drink them because they're, they're, they're delicious. You know, I love the way these taste, they sent them to me. You know, so I didn't pay for them. This isn't a plug for anybody to go buy them or anything. I actually love this drink. I think it tastes really good. Um, and I think it does something, but I can't be certain that it does. A, I have a very high tolerance, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't know. Maybe somebody with a with a very low tolerance drink, get these, drink one of them, partake, and then see what happens, you know, to, to really try to understand what terpenes do. But um, the the owners of the company are fucking wonderful. They're just really great people. They truly believe in their product. I believe in their product. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if I'm sold on the science of terpene mood enhancing yet. You know, terpenes for flavor, absolutely. For aroma, absolutely. Yeah. But for 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 mood enhancing, I know it works somehow with like essential oils, and that's a form of terpene use, I, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's just so much more research is just just needed on that biology part. Yeah, it, I mean that's what I kind of do here often though with with the terpenes. Um, that's why I guess a lot of people tend to to always go for like something that has the fruitiness in the flower, and I think that's kind of what I see here within the Illinois uh, industry is more that that you know f- that cake or that um, that like that yeah. the sweetness instead of like what you could consider like some gassy stuff like some sour diesel train wreck. You know, yeah. so, so yeah, that, 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 I think, I think it's just all depends on your, your choice, your, like a consumer's choice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, ter- uh, flavor and aroma, you know, if, if, if that's what sells you on terpenes, have at it, you know, I just, I, I, I need to look more into the science of like mood enhancing with, with terpenes. And actually, you know, I think that's, that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start, you know, researching this stuff a little bit better and, and see if maybe there's, um, I don't know. There's a scientist out there that has some really great knowledge on how it does enhance the mood. And maybe I can have a conversation with them so I can learn, you know, learning is key when it comes to cooking with cannabis, anything cannabis, learn about yourself when you're consuming, learn about, you know, um, 
learn learn about the plant you know learn about how it affects how different strains people and what is it about the strains that affects people is it the terpenes is it specific strain is it the soil it's growing i don't i don't know <laughs> i have no idea but education is key i think in in cannabis you want to cook with cannabis educate yourself you, you want to do cannabis educate yourself right like education is just uh that's key to all this shit yeah well i think everything too <laughs> You know, it's yeah. always a good a good thing to just learn some more knowledge, you know, better yourself and as well your your brain and you think you'll you'll learn learn you'll know more things and you know, always good to help other stoners out. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We're a community. Let's help each other. You know, if I get it wrong, correct me, help me out. If you get it wrong, I'll help you and correct you, you know, help you out a little bit, you know. So um well, you know, it's a community. We should be a family, we should look out for each other. No bashing each other and like, ah, oh, you're phony, none of that shit. You know, <laughs> let's smoke and have a good time. Ro yeah. Twist one up or eat one up. The choice is yours. All right, or dab one up. <laughs> yeah, uh, or dab one up. <laughs> so I, I, um, I know you're. I feel like you're always creative within your videos, uh, especially when I see. I, see, I like the the I am Batman voice. Uh, <laughs> so, so is Batman like your favorite superhero or? or... Uh, no, actually, my favorite superhero is the Flash. Oh, okay. Like the TV show Flash, not the the movie Flash. I wasn't a fan of the movie. Uh, oh, not you were... too much. Sorry for any purists out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I'm just not a fan of Ezra Miller and his take on Barry Allen. Okay. Uh, I think I think he was a miscast for for Barry Allen. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a great actor and other things. Uh, I just didn't think he was. You know, um, who who you, you know who I would have? Oh, uh, have you ever seen that show? Um, New girl, yeah, Schmidt. It's is... Schmidt. Straight up, he would have been the best fucking Barry Allen, and he actually voices the Barry Allen on a uh, on a Flash podcast on the CW. Really? Yeah, and I think he would have his personality, his goofiness. That's the Flash. That's Barry Allen, because he has the ability to go like serious and and, and comical. I think oh. Schmidt. Oh, okay, I see who you're talking about now. Barry Allen. I see. Yeah. I see. Are, are you by any chance a Marvel fan? You talking about this guy right yeah. here? Yep, Max Greenfield. He would be the, he would be the best Flash. He'd be fucking hilarious <laughs> and serious at the same time. And you know who I think would be the best reverse Flash? Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon as the reverse Flash. That would be the shit. Ooh, oh, okay. Yeah, he looks like he could be a, a always Bro. a badass villain or something like that. Dude, he could be a super villain all day. You know, um, Batman. It's just uh, somebody had said, you know, I sounded like Batman with my whispering. Uh -huh. So then, you know, I'm Batman. Yeah, I started <laughs> saying it. <laughs> no, that's what's up. I mean. With the Flash, I mean, I'm not really big on the DC, you know, universe and not. I'm more of a Marvel guy. I fucking love Spider Man. Oh, that's my favorite superhero, Spider Man. Um, oh hell yeah, yeah. But I feel like Iron Man, bro. Iron Man is. I feel like no one could top uh Robert on Iron Man. Yeah, like, nobody, nobody. I feel like he's Iron Man dude, for life. Dude, the best Batman, Michael Keaton. Really? You you don't Michael you didn't you didn't like Batman. Christian Bale? Maybe because I grew up with him, my, but like my my generation, mm -hmm. Michael Keaton all day. He was the best Batman. Did Did you like how Christian they, Bale was good? Did you like how they brought him to the Flash movie? Yeah, but I was disappointed at the end when it was um George Clooney Batman. I was like, what the fuck? He was the worst. <laughs> he was the worst Batman. You know, uh, give me Michael Keaton or Christian Bale. And yeah, th those those are probably the best Batmans. I don't care for the Ben Affleck Batman. I didn't mind, and I hate saying this, but I didn't mind the Robert Pattinson Batman. See that one? I feel like you get it's a lot of mixed conf like feelings with that one. I mean, I feel like he did a great job as Bruce Wayne. But... He was super dark. That's what I liked about it. Oh, actually, no, my my favorite uh, superhero is the Green Arrow. Because he's just a he's just a highly trained soldier with some tech, kind of like Batman. Mm -hmm. But he's just this well, not even a soldier. He's just a fucking guy. Um, but that I mean, that was my favorite TV uh, superhero TV show. You know, as far as like having powers, the Flash all day, or even Quicksilver too. 
from Marvel. Oh, yeah. Quicksilver's you know, fucking dope. I felt like they cut him off too too easy and short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm not, I don't know, man. With these movies nowadays, with like, you know, with the shows and the movies, I feel like it's just getting a little too much. You don't think so with, with the superhero? Oh, dude. It, it what, what's happening is there's there's too much CGI. There's just way too much. I mean, I mean, think of the days of like, and you know, I'm I'm a cinematographer. You know, I I, I nerd out on the, these kinds of things. But like, think of like the Goodfellas, the storytelling that went into movies like the Goodfellas, Apocalypse Now. You know, the way that the cinematography was used, the way that the storytelling was done, it's so different from what we have today. And if we went back to those those days of being more realistic, mm. you know, yeah, we can keep the CGI, but there should be, um, I don't know. There, there's something wrong with the storytelling in, in the cinematography. It's just so fake. It's so computer animated now. It's, it's you know, we're, we're losing a, a, a way to connect. It's like, it's more now like you're just behind the, or you're in front of the green screen now, instead of like, what could be a good, nice land landscape of, I don't know, it could be like a basic just dialogue instead of being outside yeah. in the real thing. You're still in the green screen. Like, that's kind of lame. I get you on that, though. And it just it just feels like you can't connect to it. It's cool to watch. It's cool to look at and see all the effects and everything. That's what I love about those movies. But but the storytelling, I think it's it's missing something, you know, um, Man, I can't stress enough. The old days of storytelling were just, it was just different. A Bronx Tale, right? And of course, the movies I'm referencing it's a whole are different, very different from, yeah. it's it's different from superhero, but the storytelling part of it, you know, it's hard to explain. Um, that's That's what's important about those movies. You know, there was something in it that really connected you to the to the film you know now it's like a lot of these movies now they they push certain agendas that doesn't fit with everybody it fits with a small amount of people but it doesn't fit with everybody so it creates a little bit of disconnect resent people yes wholeheartedly you know uh, you, but like the strong pushing of ideals and ideas is just i think it's turning people off you know because taken away from the storytelling we want to be entertained we don't want to be pushed into a way of thinking you know if we need to represent um let's say marginalized people in society, let's represent them. Let's not make that our whole storyline and like a big ass part of the movie because it takes away from the story. I want to see Thanos destroy the world. You yeah. know, I don't want to see all this, all this fluff that comes with it. It's great. Put it in there. It's fantastic. They just don't make it so, so big, you know, and the, these, these movies, they make these hidden agendas so big that it takes away from storytelling. Let's just entertain, but also represent people. Does that make sense? You yeah. know, so um yeah it's it's just all about getting back to the storytelling and it has nothing to do with like taking away from representation from anybody anybody's color orientation or anything i get that you know uh these kinds of things are just a part of society and they just don't have to be so big in movies anymore you know what i mean it it doesn't you know we can get back to storytelling and still keep representation of everybody there and tell a fantastic story you know when when hollywood starts to figure that out everybody you know but yeah, it it is getting a little much with with all of these graphics and all this flair, you know. Yeah, especially with like the Marvel universe, the MCU. Like you have to like watch these spinoff shows just so you can be up to date to buy the next movie. Which is like, nah, my god! Like I I enjoy more like <laughs> watching a movie, wait like two or three years for the next movie, and and I'm caught up within the like the thirty minutes of a movie <laughs> until right, the yeah, and it's like. I don't like I understand, you know, like they trying to, you know, at least like promote, you know, more superheroes, you know, because there's a shit ton of heroes that I feel like everybody don't doesn't even know. So yeah. that that's one cool thing. And but then again, it's like how you're saying, like, I feel like they really try to focus more on like the like, I guess the, the person's race or the, the religion or whatever, more than the superhero action, when in reality, that's what we're here for you know superhero movies you know action you know you know and the thing is too like we should focus on those things just not in the way that it's being done because you know we can all pick up on 
whose religion is what, whose orientation is what, what color is this person, or what ethnicity is this person. We're all going to pick up on that. It doesn't have to be like, boom, in your face. You know, it could be, you know, it, it, it could be more subtle, just like everyday life. When I'm walking down the street, if, you know, if, if I walk by someone different than me, Mm-hmm. there's no problem you're alive you're happy i love that about you and that that's the the approach it's like it should just be there not be forced to be there if that makes any sense and and then a lot of those hidden agendas they're just like really forced into the messaging and it, it completely dest- destroys its own message number one and it, it just film you know a little bit too you know so it, let's just be people, you know, we don't have to be forced into like, you have to like this, or you have to be accepting of this, dude, most people are, <laughs> most yeah. people are, we, you know, we walk down the street and we, we have no problem with anybody because there is no problem in color, size, mm-hmm. shape, orientation, religion. It doesn't matter. You walk down the street, smile, and give a little nod, you know? So I don't know. That's just my take on it. But, you know, uh, I, I hope that there's a new wave of like superhero movies that, get back to the storytelling and you know the focus of the person the power saving the day destroying the day <laughs> yeah right like uh, i would love to just give back to get those those like spider-man movies like the toby Maguire ones or like the the x-men ones like the very first x-men movies or the yeah. eric banna hulk one like it's just all the nostalgic but then again it's like the truth to the character you feel me like it's like the way it was made and just how you feel within the movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One Get back thing, to good storytelling. Right. And then one thing I do like about uh, the MCU is that they're actually really trying to get down to like how each character looks exactly to the comic. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, I fucking love that, man. I want to see more actual realistic comic representation. What what's uh what you think on the Fantastic Four? You thought you think uh Jim should have been uh Mr. Reed? Was there a new one that came out? Uh was that? Was there is there a new one that came out or well, the, they, the older they, films? No no no. We're, uh this well they already announced like the full official cast of the new Fantastic Four, but you know how a lot of people I'm not sure if you ever heard of, but people were kind of like debating on who should be uh Reed Richards. Because they thought that the um the Jim from the Office was gonna be the 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 next Reed Richards because he appeared in Doctor Strange, but turns out I think um I forgot who's gonna be the new Richards. I think it's Pas- interesting. Pascal. Give me one second. Pedro Pascal. Yeah, Pedro Pascal is gonna be the uh, new bro. Reed Richards. Dude, he's gonna kill it. I think he's gonna kill it. I, I like him as an actor. Um, I haven't seen the Fantastic Four in a very long time. Uh-huh. You know, but um, uh, as far as like that that choice in, in in an actor, he's fantastic, bro. In my opinion, my opinion, I love to make Last of Us, so I I think he's gonna kill it. I could see it. I mean, with he, the hair too, with the hairstyle that he'll probably get for Reed Richards. Yeah. Who Who would you would rather have? See, at first, uh, no doubt a chance I, I wanted John Krasinski to be Reed Richards because I felt like he's just, I feel like he'll he'll really like be a, a good Reed Richards. But I mean, he appeared in, in, um, yeah. in Doctor Strange, but I didn't like how they, they made the, the Illuminati real quick, you know, the deaths and all. Like I felt like they could have gone a little deeper into the Illuminati and stuff like that. fucking illuminati <laughs> that was funny that they brought that in it's like god damn man but um, i feel like i feel like with that it was like a little fandom though for the for the fans you feel me just like how they did yeah because the they killed him off in that reality yeah yeah uh just with the flash how they brought out nicholas cage though with the little cameo of when apparently he was supposed to be superman yeah <laughs> His movie never came out. Oh man, now I want to see it because he looks so ridiculous with the hair. Yeah, right with the long his silk hair. Yeah, <laughs> I just seen his fucking, fucking crap planet that... dies. <laughs> yeah, man, that was ridiculous. Did you like the Ryan Reynolds uh, Green Lantern, the Green Lantern? I did. I did. I, I liked him as Green Lantern. I, I like him better as Deadpool. Of course, I feel like he's just a perfect Deadpool. Yeah. You know? 
Now I'm, I am looking forward to, you know, um, when, when they ended the Arrowverse on the CW, uh, they ended off with um, John Diggle uh, getting the, the, the Green Lantern, you know, uh, and, and they kind of teased that John Diggle was, um, I forgot the name, uh, but he, he's, he becomes a Lantern and there's supposed to be, there was supposed to be a spinoff show of the Green Lanterns. Um, I just hope that someday they pay that off. Mm-hmm. make that a movie or something john diggle was such a great character in, in the green arrow so i i hope i hope that we uh, a green lantern show at some point or a movie a new movie yeah so I, I don't know man i feel like with these characters sometimes they do them right sometimes they do them wrong um yeah it, i don't know how he'll be as green lantern but he was he was pretty good at, at, at spartan in, in arrow did you ever watch that show no nah, arrow no no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Me, I, I loved it. I'm not familiar with the CW shows because I I used to hear that they those shows kind of suck ass, but I'm not sure if that's true or not. <laughs> the, the Green Arrow was great because it, it was really dark. Okay. It wasn't like you know a really happy show. It was just really fucking dark. Here's you know Oliver Queen, uh, basically a serial killer. You know he's got a list of people that he's got to kill. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're they're bad corporate people, I guess. And he's just picking them off one by one in season one. And then eventually he he ventures off into doing better things. But he's still like a fucking serial killer. You know, um, it, it, it that was my favorite show. And that kind of led me to The Flash just because it was a spinoff. And I was like, oh, man, I like a guy that can run fast. I want to run fast because I run slow as shit, you know. <laughs> uh, but The Green Arrow is a fucking great show, man. You know, if you ever get a chance, get, I'd say give it a shot. It, the All first right. season was the best season straight up i think there's like 11 seasons yeah that's a it's like the some first season that shit right the there <laughs> yeah the, and there's like 23 episodes in each season yeah yeah that's, that seems like a pretty long series to watch yeah um what what you thought on the suit on the suicide squad suicide squad was done which one was your favorite i like the, um, the Zack snyder I, one or the, the first one the, the one the with jared one. little yeah Okay. I like that. I like that one. I, I just, I hated Jared Leto as the Joker. Yeah, Fucking think... hated him as the Joker. Like, he was just like this, like... G- gangster Joker. Gangster. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that. I was like, what is this shit? Yeah, no, give me give me Joaquin Phoenix. Bro, you know, Joaquin the Phoenix, way that he's... he... He fucking, the way he did Joker was amazing. Imagine that and in in, in Batman going, going head-to-head would be... Which, which Batman would you want to see him with, though? Oh, man, whoever's going to be next, whoever's going to be next. Um, well, Joaquin Phoenix actually, he's kind of old. Michael Keaton? No, he's a little too old. No, I feel it might have Mike, to be Ben Affleck. I feel with the Michael Keaton one is more like just because of how his Gotham looks and all. I feel like it wouldn't really work though. Because yeah, of Tim no. Burton, you know, like how he made his his Gotham look. I don't. I feel like it's more of a kind of like a happier Batman, you can say. Because I uh, yeah, it'd probably be Ben Affleck. Probably be Ben Affleck. He was the happiest Batman, or or Val, but Val Kilmer. He's just he he's he's you know he's done. Uh, so sad. How, well, what's what's become uh, his his health conditions? You know. Oh, when yeah. he did that only one Batman movie. Yeah, he did. He did one, but like he would have been like the happiest Batman, maybe. Um, did Did you yeah, like? I wonder which universe he would live in. It might have to be a new Batman. I could, no, I could... you know who it'd be. Um, the TV show Gotham. That kid, grown up. It'd be him. I could see that. Yeah. I feel like that kid goes through a lot of shit in the in the series, or I don't know. It's just it's, I know. And, it's like... and remember, the Joker has to be older than Batman. Yeah, you're right. So this would work because they ended the show and he had just become Batman and he was like 16 years old. Yeah, okay. I, th- I think it, it would be him. Damn, man, that was a good show. I always wanted to see him like go full Batman. You know? I, I was I was, re- I was, was really into it like for the first two seasons, but then I, I kind of fell off. But yeah, I feel like that would have been a good one. I feel, I, feel like, yeah. I feel like Christian Bale probably could... could probably fit in i feel like just because how i i saw him with um with uh, what's the what's the buddy's name um keith ledger's joker oh yeah yeah he could 
He could. Dude, Heath Ledger was the best Joker. Yeah. I forgot all about that. Heath Ledger was just like, that dude was on a whole other level. Rest in peace. Uh, I I I said how how I think like that personality of the Joker really I think well they they say that 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 kind of made him you know start start falling out and shit like that but like that's crazy you know like how a scene yeah. could really affect an actor like I think Jack Nicholson had had like warned him about the role I read somewhere that Jack Nicholson or somebody had warned him about the role prior to doing it that you got to be careful with being the Joker yeah oh and i did not okay for a split second i forgot that he played joker too with uh with michael Keaton. Yeah. yeah i didn't like at the end how he died like by falling off like from the church and he's just all you hear is the little toy teeth you know just oh laughing. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i haven't watched that in so long it's time to pull that up that one up uh, yeah, man. But if if you, if you could say if, uh, going with going with the with the Spider Man with the Spider Verse, bro, like who is your favorite Spider Man? Hmm. Probably Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Let me see. We had Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Was there one more? No, Toby Toby Maguire yeah. to me was the the best Spider Man. I didn't I didn't care for Andrew Garfield at all at all. I feel like Andrew Garfield was the the better Spider Man. Toby was the better Peter. Really? I think so. If if you think of okay. it like that, then yeah, I feel like it's like that. Yeah, you know I agree there because uh, uh, Andrew Garfield was work as, as Spider Man, right? Mm-hmm. And Toby Maguire was kind of funny. Uh, I like Tom Holland's take on Spider Man as the young character um the only thing with him is that i don't like that you have to bring another superhero in his movies like it cannot just be a solo yeah. movie with him like that's the only thing i don't like about it and it's like fuck yeah toby yeah i agree though toby mcguire was a great he was a great peter yeah and i and then i don't know if you heard recently apparently the rumors the rumors are that spider-man 4 is, is gonna start filming again so Hopefully, man, we get to see one more time. Hopefully, we'll see, man. You know, um, I haven't gone to the movies in a very long time, so hopefully, they make something worth going to go see. You know. <laughs> so I know you said you were also into like sci-fi stuff like that, my guy. So, what, what, so my question, biggest question is, do you believe? Yeah, I, I believe that there's there's something else. You know, um, yeah, there, I, I believe that there's something else. What what it is. You know, whether it's uh, a physical being or a spiritual being, there's definitely something else to this world. Uh, yeah, you know, um, that's what I believe. Definitely, I believe in energy. I believe that there there's good and bad energy that you can experience and that can manifest itself into things. Um, yeah. <laughs> But what you what's your intake with nowadays? You know, with like all these you know UFOs and aliens, bro. Like, so uh, in, in 2010, I was doing a school project, okay. and to make a, a a longer story shorter, um, three of us decided to venture off to Las Vegas and then take a trip out to Rachel, Nevada, and interview people about Area 51 and what they see in the desert there. We drove up up to the um to the uh the gate of area 51 and you know did some filming and everything cameras were popping up out the ground um we saw that black truck that's portrayed in all the tv shows just sitting on a hill uh, came down and started chasing us out of there um at one point i had taken my camera and i pointed it up at the only cloud that was in the sky and as soon as i i started filming it that cloud started to disappear it's actually on youtube too really Uh, it's called our yeah um let What's me see if i can let me see if i can find it real quick because it's so old yeah. 1080 visual are we alone uh, youtube that's crazy where the hell did it go It's it's so hard to find now on YouTube, but like we did this class project and we we went out oh, here. It is I found it. You want to look? He send the the link real quick. 
Yep, yep. I imagine. Let's see. So yeah, we 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 went there. Um, the locals were very convinced that there is something there. They talked about uh, humanoid drones patrolling the desert at night, uh -huh. uh, and they were like they were full on humanoid robots. Uh, they talked about you know a few different colors of alien that are over the hill. Um, it was very creepy because we talked to this guy who called himself Agent Fifty One, mm -hmm. and he had moved out to Rachel, Nevada, when, you know, because someone told him to, and he stayed there and been there to research things. And he was just so convinced when, it, when you, when you experience these people talking, uh -huh. you can feel that they're not fucking lying. You know, you know, that we, we talked to the owner of this place called the little Ailey Inn. Okay. And she was she was like very convinced of the things that are happening. This Agent Fifty One, same thing. Um, we we found some like meth addicts that that were just there. We decided to talk to them too, and you know they had some insight into things. Um, it, it was a uh, yeah. I, I believe that there's something else. There's something else. You know, um, when I went to Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, we were we were in a a, a city called Ushuaia. And that's like the southernmost tip of South America. And our driver, we had asked him, hey, you know, uh, we know that the glaciers are close, but is there more land beyond this ice wall, right? Okay. And he had said that the fishermen say, yeah, oh, there, there's more out there. There's definitely more out there. You know, so, um, yeah, I believe there, there, there's a lot that we don't know about our planet, what's above our planet, you mm -hmm. know. Um, there, there's definitely something more. There has to be, you know, to think that we're the only intelligent species is very arrogant, uh -huh. you know, especially because we can't even identify uh, where the spirit is in the human body that gives us this ability to communicate and create hats and create glasses so we can see better and, and so forth. Right. You so, know, um, yeah. So this is this is the cloud you're talking about, though. Yeah, so you see the shape of it? Yeah. You see right the, the, it, look, it looks like an aircraft. And as you play the clip, it starts to shrink, and that's the only cloud in the sky that disappears while I'm filming it. I don't know if it's anything, but uh -huh. it's fucking suspicious that as soon as I started filming it, there it goes, just disappearing. It, you know, and, and you, you have to account for that shape. Like, look at that shape. Right, like that it knows. doesn't just evaporate that that quick, you know. Like, what the fuck? Shape that that is taken is like an aircraft with with a, with like a like a pointy, you know, nose. Like a, yeah, like at the end I of it. Know. Yes, I feel you. Damn, man, that's crazy. That's yeah. some good footage, though, right there. You know, <laughs> if you want to bring some proof into motherfuckers, like look at that. <laughs> and none of that is CGI. I have all of that original footage still backed up like that. That is exactly what it was. The only thing I did, I sped it up by 20% because it did take a while for it to completely disappear. Mm -hmm. But I sped it up 20% and that cloud just started shrinking and it just, it maintained that, that shape of like an aircraft. Or I don't know, man. I don't know. That's, that's what I saw. That's what I captured. It mm -hmm. could be nothing. Could be nothing. That's crazy though. That's amazing though. Like for you to actually have that. Like whoa, wow. <laughs> um, but I I don't know, man. I just don't understand why people, you know, tend to, you know, ignore it or or say it's not real. Like especially with our government. Like I know, like it's there's always like some fishy shit going on up there and all. But like, why hide it from us? You feel me? Like I'm not sure if you ever heard like a few months ago when. I'm not sure if it was true or not, but because I seen a majority on TikTok where apparently the Nevada uh, spaceship crashed into somebody's backyard. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that story before. Nah. Oh yeah, I, I, I saw that. You know, yeah. um, I'm skeptical of of anything the government tells us during an election year or close to an election year. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. That that's all I'm gonna say about that. I, I don't know if if an actual alien really landed. It's possible. Uh -huh. I don't know. I wasn't there. All I know is yeah. that, you know, when we're close to an election year, just be very careful of what the government is telling you 
because they're like look over here and over here they're doing something right you know so oh yeah it's, it always happens you feel me like whatever the news drops you know it's just the cover of like what's really going on and, and it, it's just starting to show a, a lot more and from what i'm trying to go towards it's like with these issues like for example like when instagram and facebook got apparently shut down at&t mm. got shut down like that's that's crazy, right? Like how how are all these type of like companies, you know, that get to do with technology, you know, are are malfunctioning? I know it's 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 wild, man. You know, just tell us this shit. You know what, my guy, before you you head out and all, um, I actually wanted to get a little bit into it with you, and this is about TikTok. Yeah. So how how do you feel on that, knowing that you're like a influencer? within the TikTok community and stuff like that. And any getting banned, the whole ban thing? Yeah. You know, uh, TikTok hasn't really treated its creators very good. You know, um, there's been so many creators that out of nowhere, they can't reach their following. And now it, it's, it's tough for me to say this because I say this while I'm still getting on average 50 to 1,000 views per video. and I experienced a few years of very low engagement, low views, and a lot of people ex experienced that on a, on a much deep, harder level than I did, a more tougher level than I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, TikTok isn't very responsive to it. TikTok seems to be more concerned with pushing its TikTok shop and getting people to become consumers rather than allowing us to entertain people. You know, I joined TikTok late 2019, early 2020, where, you know, not that it was easier to go viral, but it was easier to be entertained and to entertain. Now it seems like you have to sell something or, you know, you have to go live. You have to do these other things, which are great for the platform, but it's just pushed. It's just so in your face. It's, TikTok is trying to be Instagram, uh, YouTube, Pinterest, all, all these, uh, you know, social medias in one. And it's like, fuck, just focus on one thing. You don't need to be Amazon, Instagram, and, and you know, whatever you you could just i don't know you know there's a lot of a lot of creators that you just can't reach your following so here i am i'm somebody with 1.9 million followers on tiktok wow that's fantastic i'm i'm proud of myself for making it to that point but we never reach those 1. million followers you know uh there may be times where we post a video and the video goes viral mm -hmm. right and let's say you get 5 million views 10 million views i guarantee you there's a few hundred thousand of your million followers that did not see that video so you never fully reach your followings tiktok has a problem with how it's treated a lot of its creators albeit there's some creators that didn't experience this at all and they have a different outlook on it you know, I've seen it with a, a few people. I've seen it with my own account. And, you know, it's clear that it's not about the creator anymore. It's it's about the commerce now, you know. So TikTok getting banned, um, I don't feel too bad about it. Mm -hmm. It sucks to lose what appears to be a big following at 1.9 million followers, but it's not real. I don't have 1.9 followers on that platform because I can't reach 1.9 million followers on that platform. You know, um, in reality, we our followers, what mm -hmm. we have is who we reach with each individual video. That's that's social media. That's your true quasi following or whatever. You know, um, it's who we reach. That's mm -hmm. just that's just what it is on TikTok. So TikTok to go away for me, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. You know, and I think that you know, with the content that I've created and the levels that I've been able to actually achieve the, and get to, um, I can do that somewhere else. You know, I haven't been able to completely do it on YouTube and Instagram yet, but that's because I had put so much focus into TikTok and growing on TikTok. And, you know, that's where my platform seemed to be. And I never put any focus on the other platforms as I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, those ones aren't going away. TikTok, wholeheartedly is going away. I think people need to realize that. And people, you know, you know, are saying that, oh no, they're just forcing them to sell. The Chinese government is not going to allow them to sell. You know, they have an algorithm that we're never going to get. So if they were to sell, the algorithm would have to be completely rewritten. And who knows how good or bad that's going to be. But at the end of the day, uh, I, you know, the American market is only 15% of TikTok's business. So oh, wow. uh, yeah, that's a big number, but uh -huh. it's not that big. You know, they have everywhere else. 
That's you true. know, unless other countries join on and, you know, Canada and the UK and they all start saying, you know, what, fuck this app. We don't we don't want it either. You know, then it becomes, you know, a big problem. But I don't see TikTok being sold to an American company. What I see happening is TikTok getting a full on ban, you know, unless, um, and I, you know, uh, for anybody watching, regardless of what your political opinion is, what, what I'm going to say is is not fact, but it's closer to fact than not. You know, if Donald Trump is elected president, we might not see a TikTok ban, which which, you know, for the people that love Trump, remember, he was the guy trying to ban it mm -hmm. when he was president. And now he's the guy that kind of would save it not being president. You're being played by both sides here. Uh, but my, my, my point is that 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 would be the way that TikTok stays, you know, because it, it's, you know, it, if Joe Biden is the president, he's already said that he signed the bill into law. Once he gets it, effectively banning TikTok because China's not going to allow them to sell. That's people need to be real about that part, you know. So um, if Donald Trump is elected, TikTok may be safe. We won't know. If Joe Biden is reelected, yeah, we, we we won't know, you know. But um, <laughs> don't do not base your politics on TikTok, please, everybody. You know, look at your candidates, look at what they're doing, and if if you believe in them, regardless if if they're mean or they're nice. Doesn't matter if you believe in the policies, then you you focus on that. And I'm, you know, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm very much independent because you know these America is fucking broken with the two party system. But we're not going there. My point is not, not TikTok, today, not on this episode. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know, we need we need another one, my guy. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't believe in the party system I have here. But if if uh -huh. TikTok is going to be saved, it's probably going to happen by Donald Trump, and then. Two years in, he probably lies to you again, and then it's gone, you know. So, you know, it's TikTok is going away, you know. Um, if the Senate passes this this bill, mm -hmm. it's 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 going away. It's going away. I, I do believe TikTok is going away. Am I heartbroken by it to lose that that big of a following and four years of hard work? Absolutely, I am. But that's not going to stop me. I'm still on YouTube, the can of barbecue. I'm still on Instagram, the can of barbecue. And we're just getting started with the cannabis stuff. So if I lose TikTok, I was kind of starting all over anyway with a whole new direction. And so I'm losing followers, but I'm also gaining a ton of new followers, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it it's, it's good. Like at the end of the day, um, it's just the world we live in. Imagine all the people that lost their accounts when Vine went away, you know? Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it is what it is, man. I think that's why I think Instagram and like Facebook are like just the safest as you can see so far, you know, because you never know when, when they're going to yeah. start banning. And YouTube. People. And YouTube, yeah. But Yeah, YouTube. All, all of my content on YouTube is age restricted now because of the cannabis. Oh, yes. <laughs> but it's fine. Like, you know, if, if, if I don't make a ton of money from, like, I love what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And of course, everything is about money. We need to make money. We need to live. But like, I'm not doing it just for the money. Like, I love making these videos, you know, and on YouTube, I have completely limited myself in revenue by going this direction, you know, um, I but it is what it is. Yeah. This is where I'm going. <laughs> and I think it is uh, for everybody who's trying to be a content creator within the cannabis industry is like right away from the start. We know we're limited. Um, but yeah. th th but then again, it it's, it's up to us as a whole community to change that. So, you know, it's got to start with with all of us little by little, man. But I, yeah. I think that that just wraps it up for today's pod. I appreciate you coming to Cannavive and talking with you my guy oh yeah man it was a great ass vibe um and i'm, I'm sure this won't be the last time that we see you and can vibe hell yeah man we gotta do it again definitely. For sure most definitely with all of us smoking here and shit like that yeah <laughs> but again thank Next you for time coming Chicago, we'll have to link up oh for sure bro let me know I'm, I'm always as well we do content creation on the side so it's like product reviews or just vlogging you know so I'm down to, you know, if you ever come over here, hit me up and, you know, do some content, DT action with some, some cannabis or, you know, and get you some, some quick hell action yeah. on some cooking. So let's go. Let's go. Hell yeah, bro. All right, then. So, well, well, yeah, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you, bro. All right, then. Have a good one, everybody. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers.